This video will give you a basic introduction to using CSS. And hopefully before you're listening to this, you've already spent a little bit of time creating some basic HTML. If not, I recommend that you go back to a previous video or tutorial and look that up. Now on my screen here, I have two programs open. On the left, I've got Eclipse, which is an IDE, or a program used by developers. Now, I've got the web development plugins that go in it, that really the only thing I'm using it for is just a nice way to display some text. On the right is Firefox. Now, Firefox, I have a plugin loaded called Firebug that I will explain more about later. But you can replicate this setup with any sort of text editor over here on the left and your normal website program here on the right. And I've just had with this file essentially saved on a local computer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I have a basic website set up over here with a basic title, header, paragraph, list, a couple list items. Now, as I say and go over here and refresh my page, you see that it looks pretty plain at this point. That's just using the standard styling that Firefox defaults to. Now let's go ahead and get some stuff actually looking nice in here. So to do this, we're going to create a style block over here in my code. Now this normally would, for a larger system, be separated as, as, as its own file. But for our purposes, we're doing so little that we can just stick it right in the document itself. Now let's say we want to fix some font first. So let's go ahead and style our h1 element. So to style the h1, we type in h1, and then open bracket and closing bracket. This basically means anything inside of this bracket set is going to be applied to any H1 element, or in my case, just this one right here. So let's do a simple one first. Let's say color is going to be red. I go ahead, save this, go to my other thing, update it. Now I can see I have a red style over here, my header one element. Similarly, let's go ahead and style a paragraph as well. We want paragraph to be blue, and then it's also going to have my UL, say color yellow. I'll save and refresh, and now I have some more information. Okay, so a couple of things. So obviously, each one of these blocks just applies to that. So this paragraph does not go to the H1 element, right? So whatever is inside of the blocks goes to that piece. The other interesting thing is you see this UL here. I'm styling the UL element, which is this guy right here. Now CSS is inherited in some ways. So you notice that the LI element, since it's part of this UL element, gets the color yellow. Now in here we can add multiple style rules for each element. So perhaps we can do background color black. I refresh my page, and now I see the background of my UL element is black. Similarly, we could do something like change the font style. So maybe we're going to do font face, and we'll just do it to times new Roman for now. Let's pop it over here. Okay, so now we have a couple interesting things. If you look at each one of our rules, we have the colon, saying this is the thing we're applying style to, and this is the value of the style. So make color equal to red. Now interestingly, we have font face equals time in Roman. If you look over here on the right side, you see that actually didn't happen. It didn't update. And one of the, this is one of the really nice things about Firebug, is that we can actually look at an element by right clicking on it and going to inspect, and it'll actually tell us the exact styles that are in place and you can actually disable, turn them on and off just to make sure it works or doesn't work. So you can see that we have something wrong over here because our Firebug isn't picking it up. So if you look back to your CSS definitions, you'll find out it's actually font family. Save and reload. And now you see we have this rule font family come out over here. So this is why I like using Firebug because you can make sure that what you're writing over here is actually being applied on this side as well. Okay, so that's some very basic CSS styling. Now often what you're going to have is you may have not just one header one element, but possibly a couple of them. 
So say we have header one over here, and I want to have another header element. Maybe I want to call this uh, accomplishments or something along those lines. But for some reason, I don't like the styling of accomplishments. I don't want it to be the same as over here. So what we can do is, instead of relying upon the kind of thing we're styling, you can actually do other sets of rules. So instead of just the kind of element, header one, header one, we can style by ID. So we might say ID equals to header. So now what we can do, if we want to just style Nathan Garrett, Instead of saying header one, we can say pound header. Refresh our document. And now we see that this header, because it has an ID of header, is being styled as red times zero Roman. And this one, even though it's a header one, is not. So with ID, you can have one thing one, one unique name per document. But it's possible you might also have classes of things. Say maybe we have uh, you know, some paragraph elements are actually quotes and we have more than one. So what we can do with that is you can just apply what's called a class. So underneath a paragraph we can say class equals info. Then up here dot class. So what this means is that the first one here says ID. That's what the little hash symbol refers to. If you use a dot, it refers to the class name. So I go ahead and save, refresh. Oops, excuse me. Dot info dot class there. We see class info, and now we have blue. The nice thing about this is that if you're doing this in multiple set of places, you can use it not just on that initial paragraph, but perhaps also here as well. Over here, refresh. So now I've got that class being applied to my paragraph, as well as my header one. So hopefully that should give you a couple of ideas about how to style things. You can style them either by the kind of thing they are, by the class, see right here, class equals info, or by their ID, ID equals header. Just remember that you can only have one thing with a unique name, and so I can only have one header on the page at a time. You can have multiple classes, and classes can be applied to any different kind of thing, your paragraphs or headers. The last thing that we should look at when we do CSS, and we'll run into a lot, is how to deal with what's called the box model. Now if you notice over here, when I click to inspect an element in Firebug, you know, I have my, I get my styles here, that when I hold my cursor over it, it changes the screen a little bit. So now it has blue over the Nathan Garrett and yellow underneath that. That's actually where it's for give, talking about the spacing. And the idea is that for any element you have on the page, there's a couple of different spacing options that you want to give to it. So for this one header, the yellow after it is supposed to separate some text from the header. Same thing with our paragraph. We have some space around it as well. Same thing with our list items too. So let's go ahead and do some custom stuff with this. So let me go ahead to here for my header. I'm not going to do what's called padding. I'm going to get 10 pixels worth of padding. Now if I refresh and look at it again, I'll see I have a purple thing now. So what padding is doing is it's, is it's wrapping on the inside of the, of the element that I'm styling, putting some extra space in there. Now perhaps I want to get a border. So if you see now, I have a nice little black line around there. Oops, excuse me. Go back to the element here. And you notice that the black element is on the outside of the purple. So we have padding on the inside, and we have the border. The last element we have is what's called the margin. So 
So I'm going to give a lot of margin to it. This is our header element. I refresh over here, and now you see I've got purple for padding, black for the border, and yellow for the margin. Now, it, some elements have different unique rules when it comes to padding or margin, but it basically, here's what you remember. If you have an element that you've got color inside of, it's often useful to think about it in terms of padding because you usually want the color to go all the way to the outside of the object. If you have something like a picture or text where you want just a little bit of space after words, you, then margin is usually the thing you want to use. And of course, border is just used as a border. But the simplest way is to try it out and see how it works. So that's basic introduction to CSS. The basic idea is it's pretty straightforward. You've got blocks of rules that apply to certain things, whether it be by ID, by class, or by kind of object. You've got some simple CSS properties like color, background color, or font face, and you've got simple stuff for padding and borders as well. Now, generally, the easiest way to do with this kind of thing is just to, to look it up on the site like w3schools.com. But there are a lot of really good explanation sites to find out what these, these terms are. And a little bit of work on it, and you should be able to do some nice style and make your page look a little bit more professional.